the Holy Spirit inspired the writing of the Bible. So he was the one that was moving on 40 different authors on three different continents, three different languages they wrote in over a span of 2,000 years, and he inspired them to write one story. It's the story of creation, sin, salvation, and future glory. One story throughout the Bible, one scarlet thread of redemption throughout. That's the Holy Spirit that made that happen. He appeared as a dove, alighting on Jesus, right as he was being baptized and coming up out of the water in the River Jordan. That's the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, the, the Holy Spirit is described as oil, water, wine, wind, fire, a cloud. That's the Holy Spirit right there. And yet, he is your comforter, your guide. Wow. He is the one who, the, the phrase is, he carries you along through things. He is the one who is called alongside you to help you. That's the Holy Spirit. This one who was hovering, flittering over the unformed earth is right there and wants to be in you and help you and guide you and take you through it. Wow. So, lest there be any confusion, I want you to know there is one God. There is one true God. And he has revealed himself in three persons. Three in one. We use the word Trinity to just try to somehow describe this indescribable God. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. The stars proclaim that God the Father is your creator. The stars. So I don't know if you like the stars as much as I do. I was out last night looking at the stars in my backyard, a little sliver of moon out there, and all of those were declaring, God created us. God created us. God is our creator. God is our creator. Jesus came so that you'd get to know God. He's just not the God out there who creates stars and planets, but he is personal, and he came to actually touch us and give his life for us. The Holy Spirit came into your life, and he comes into your life so that you can have God with you always. We used to use a phrase, invite Jesus into your heart or invite him into your life. How does he come into your heart, into your life? By his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Would you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 20, verses 19 to 21? You can turn in your app, your Bible app. I hope you use the, the U version app. It's such a good app. We always use the, we read from the NLT translation, so you can just choose that if you're using an app. So but, uh, while you're looking for that, the context of the story, it is Easter. I don't mean like Easter a few weeks ago where, where we had fun and preached a word and talked about believe for it and at a carnival. I don't mean that Easter. I mean Easter, <laughs> the first one. It was Easter, like the day Jesus actually rose from the dead. It was resurrection day. And Jesus had been crucified on Friday and buried and in the tomb for three days. And on the third day, he rose from the dead on Sunday morning. John 20, verses 19, starting in verse 19, says, That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. So very dry. <laughs> so... The, the, these followers of Jesus, some names you might recognize, Peter, James, John, others like that, they, they were hiding because Jesus had been killed, and they wondered, would they be next? Can you imagine being in that situation? It would be like, if I were killed, only I'm not God, but if I were killed, and you're hiding and wondering, are you going to be next? That's, that's how they're feeling. It's bad. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. <clears throat> Peace be with you, he said. And I just love how Jesus comes in and calms your fears. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 I 
I do think the mask makes it worse. It just kind of like dries everything out. I see what you're doing. Thank you. Do you want to unpeel it? Thank you. Awesome. You keep it, you just keep a loop repeater back there. Verse 20. As Jesus spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. And can you imagine uh, some of those people in that room had betrayed Jesus, had run away from him in his hour of need. Not, not, uh, not the one betrayer. Judas was no longer there. But they, they, had, they had let Jesus down. And can you imagine on that day, he comes back, and there's an awkwardness between you and God. And Jesus steps in and breaks that all down. And the first thing he says to them is, peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's so cool. Uh, No need for fear and punishment because Jesus took their punishment. Jesus was so compassionate. I I just love him. So uh, back to the Bible. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, again he said, peace be with you. Just making sure you got this. And then he says, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you, plural. Tag, you're it. That's what Jesus says to not just the 12 disciples, but to all those that were gathered in this room. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And I believe that this was the follow, Jesus' followers' actual salvation experience. Because now, now Jesus has just paid for their sins. Now their sins can be forgiven. The punishment has been taken. And so now these people who have been believing in him, now they could actually be converted, transformed on the inside. And so these believers in Jesus, he said, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And in uh, both languages, both main languages that, that the Bible is written in, the words, words spirit, breath, and wind are interchangeable. So it's almost like Jesus spirited on them. He breathed on them. He blew a wind in them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Pretty cool and pretty amazing time. All that, all that they had been waiting for, longing for, for these about three years while they're following Jesus, now they actually experience a change on the inside. Very cool. So I've got three truths for you today. If you're a note taker, uh, hopefully that'll just help you. Uh, and I encourage you to take notes. Uh, get, it, get it into you. Three truths from this passage. First one is this. You come alive spiritually through the Holy Spirit. You come alive spiritually through the Holy Spirit. So many things that we do to try to to bring a feeling of life on the inside, but really, life is found, spiritual life is found in the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. It's his work in you. In John chapter 3, Jesus was explaining stuff. before, Before he went to the cross, Jesus was explaining stuff to one of the Jewish religious leaders. And in verse 5, he, he replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. A possible, a couple different meanings there, but most likely being born the natural way, messy water, and the Spirit. You need both. Humans can reproduce only human life. There again, he refers to that again, but the Holy Spirit gives birth the spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Second time, you must be born again. And here's the issue. We're all born into sin. So we have a citizenship in the kingdom of darkness from the moment we're born. We are born into sin, which is equated with being dead inside. Being, have you ever said that? Oh, I just feel dead inside. We were all literally spiritually dead inside. When you turn away from your sins or repent of your sins, turn the other direction, you put your faith in Jesus, Jesus breathes on you and he breathes his Holy Spirit in you. You receive the Holy Spirit. And I believe that that's what happened on that first resurrection day, that first Easter Sunday night, when the followers of Jesus really became born again. 
In Titus 3.5, another place in the Bible, one of the early church leaders, Paul, wrote, Jesus saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Listen to this. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. Another place in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.17, says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. If you are in Christ, if you have put your faith in Jesus, you are new. You may or may not act new in all areas, but I want to encourage you to speak over yourself, hey, self, I'm new. I'm new. The old has gone. That doesn't fit here anymore. You have a new identity to embrace. You are a child of God. And if you have put your faith in Jesus, whether you're watching this online later or you're, watch, or you're here in the room, if you put your faith in Jesus, would you say these words out loud? I'm a child of God. Say it. How much out? That's agreeing with the word of God. You are forgiven, accepted, loved, chosen. Overwhelming victory is yours. That's what the word of God says. Nothing can separate you from God's love. God is causing everything. He's making everything collaborate, work together for your good. Everything, the hard things, the easy things, everything. He's causing it to work together for your good. So you come alive spiritually through the Holy Spirit. Another truth is that the Holy Spirit gives you life so you can share it. The Holy Spirit gives you life so you can share it. Uh, that, referring back to that passage in John, which is kind of the main one I'm working out of today, John 20, 19, uh, actually down in verse 21, Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Somebody say, as. as. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, like the greatest missionary comes from heaven to earth. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So now, picture this setting. This is not a denominational meeting. This is not um, a, a leader um, commissioning uh, like a small group of pastors, something like that. This is not that setting. This is most likely all of the followers of Jesus or a good chunk of them up to this at, at this point gathered together. He didn't just breathe on the 12. Or we might be tempted to say, well, this was just sort of an official greeting or something, I breathe on you, da 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 No, he, it was at least the 12, the women, it was the two guys who had seen Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And like, there's a little gathering, they crammed as many people as they could behind closed doors. And Jesus breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So he was infusing his followers with his spirit, and he was sending them out with, uh, to bring the kingdom of heaven to the people of earth. That's what Jesus came for. And he sent us out. We're included in that group. So Jesus passes on the baton to us, all of his apprentices, all of his followers. And that's why we're sharing Jesus and growing together. That's why. Because Jesus said, as I was sent here, I'm sending you. And I'm giving you my spirit to accomplish that. It's a great honor. And it's a great responsibility. Because if we don't do it, it's not going to get done. And the good thing is we don't have to do it on our own power. We can lean on the Holy Spirit. So way back, this reminds me, when Jesus breathed on the disciples, it reminds me of way back in Genesis 2, God created Adam, the first human being, and he formed him from the dirt. And the, the Word of God says he, God breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. So when God breathed on Adam, he became a living person. Now Jesus, God the Son, breathed on his followers and each became a new person. Each of them became a, a, a person with God inside. With their, their spirit came to life. Their dead spirit came to life and they were new. The old is gone, the new has come. They're a new creation. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you are receiving Jesus into you. He is God. Holy, Holy Spirit is God, God the Spirit. And so you're receiving him into you. And so what happens is you more and more, the things that, become, that are important to Jesus, 
become more and more important to you because you have God living inside of you by his spirit. So what matters to him begins to matter to you, such as sharing his love with a world who is hurting in so much pain. So the Holy Spirit gives you life so that you can share it. And the final one, final truth is this. Jesus says to you, but wait, there's more. I think he was the original infomercial. But wait, there's more. In Acts chapter 1, verses 3 to 5, it, it tells this story. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, Jesus, it's talking about, appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is very interesting. Jesus has already breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. They're already saved, we would say. They're already followers of Jesus. They're already converted. They're already transformed. They've already become a new person. They already have the Spirit of God inside them. And yet, Jesus, the one who had already breathed on them the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, but wait, you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. There's more. There's more. There's more. And Jesus, he's foreshadowing so that they would recognize that when it happened, but he's letting them know you still need the power that it's going to take to win this whole world to Jesus, to share Jesus' love with every single person on the planet. You need to be fully empowered by the Holy Spirit. So would you like to know how to do that? Come back next Sunday <laughs> on Pentecost, and we're going to be talking about part two of Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Today, we're talking about part one. And next week, we are going to be praying for people, praying for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If, if you're a Christian, you have the Spirit of God in you. Paul, Paul is early church leader Paul, very adamant about that. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ in you, you're not even saved. You do have the Spirit of God in you. You do. If you've put your faith in Jesus, you do. But there's more. There's more. We're going to describe what that is, how to recognize it, when it happens, how to, how to seek it. So this, this is what I'd love to do. I'd love to see us be in a posture of prayer from this time on till next, till next Sunday to either be baptized in the Holy Spirit yourself or to pray for others to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So would you stand to your feet, everybody? Whoo, my goodness. I, feel, I just feel fulled up. I don't know if that's a word. I, fulled up. I feel filled up and full up with, with what God's doing in me and in us today. Would you bow your heads? Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. Wow. Everything about you, God, amazes me, and it, this amazes me, that you breathe on us and you send the Holy Spirit into us. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege to be sent by you, just as you are Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. With your head's still bowed. I want to give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus, to become his apprentice, not just someone who in your mind thinks Jesus is nice. That's not what a follower of Jesus is. An apprentice is someone who studies him, spends time with him, imitates him, follows his advice, follows his leading. That's what an apprentice is. I want to invite you to be an apprentice of Jesus Christ today. How do you do that? Turn from your sin. We're all born into sin, remember? So everyone must make this decision if you want to be born again. It takes, it takes something on your part, a response to what Jesus has already done. So turn away from your sin, all those things that separate you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead you. That's it. That's how you start. Just start there. Start there. And, and I, I don't know where you're at. Maybe, maybe some of you have been at church for a long time. Maybe some of you are brand new. Some of you are in between. I want to make sure that you are invited 
to put your faith in Jesus and actually experience the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So if you would like to do that today, if you would like to put your faith in Jesus, turn from your sin, turn your life over to God, let him lead. If you'd like to do that, would you just raise your hand? And that hand raised just says, Pastor, pray for me because I'm doing that today. Yeah, I see ya. That's awesome. That's very good. Several hands going up. And I, I know that sometimes there is just this, this element of, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that I'm good with God. And that, I think God loves that so much. So I, I want to just lead you in a prayer. Let's all just join with them. Let's just pray together. If you raise your hand, would you pray this from your heart? And, and let's just talk to Jesus right now. Let's do it. Jesus, Jesus I, invite I invite you into my life. My life. Please forgive me Please of my sin and make me new. Make me new. I, choose I choose to follow you, to follow you. Starting, now, starting now. I give you my life. I'm your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So good. We welcome you to the family of God. And if you made that decision today, you made kind of a fresh decision uh, for, for that, to put your faith in Jesus, I want to encourage you to just text the word RESTART to that same phone number, 97000, and that will let me know. We could just encourage you. Now, if you're a believer, I want to ask you, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized? Would you like to be? I would expect a lot more hands on this one. Yeah come back next week, but let's start praying now. I believe you could, be, you could be baptized in the Holy Spirit right now, right now, or today, or this week, for sure, by next Sunday. All right? Let's just believe. Let's, let's come believing that and expecting that. Amen? So next Sunday, we're going we're gonna to explain more about what that means and all that stuff. We'll invite people forward, to, and we're going to be praying. It's going to be a very powerful Sunday. So come, come, come finish this out, you guys. Wow. God's amazing. He is. Yes. Like, Amen. I mean, it's just, yeah, can we, I mean, let's clap, shout, dance. I mean, it's, it's awesome. No matter where you are in your faith, there's always more. You know, I mean, you know, maybe you've been baptized in the Spirit. Maybe you've been raised in the church, you know, since you were a wee lad. But there's always more. <laughs> what a wonderful infomercial. Like, it's just fantastic. I love that. Yeah. And I also love that it doesn't just stop with us, but we receive the Holy Spirit to go and give to others as well. Yeah. There's more. There's always more. So good. Um, well, a few things. Um, if you are new with us, would you just text GREET? To, sorry, we changed it. GREET to 9700. That way we, we know that you're here. We can get connected with you. We won't, like, bug you with a ton of emails or anything. We just want to know that you're here. Um, yeah. And if you're watching online, actually, if you're in the room, look us up on YouTube. You know, search yeah. Northwest Family Church, subscribe. If you know somebody who's like, oh, I don't really know if I want to come to church, share it with them. You know, share, you know, they can watch online and then maybe that'll bring them, you know, in person. Yeah. And right now, following service, we have our connect group. So don't leave. Stick around, uh, connect with us. And then on Wednesday, we'll have connect groups again if you, again, if you want to join us then. Yeah, and our amazing missionary guest is going to be out in the lobby with prayer cards. So mm -hmm. go stop, say hi, say thanks for coming. You know, maybe get some prayer, pray for them and their family and their ministry. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so we will see you guys next Sunday uh, in person and online at 1030. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Bye.